Hi, this is Linear Algebra Notes, the now we're starting Unit 2, and we're doing matrix operations. So in this part, we'll learn about addition, multiplication, and scalar multiples, and transposes, and raising to a power, and lots of little things for us that we do need. So let's start off with some notation for the matrix. And so we have matrix A. So we can call every item by its position. I always look at this as like battleship. And so I know exactly which position I'm in based upon the ind index for the A term. So when I see A11, this is the row that it's in, and this is the column that it's in. That's the column, okay? So that means that it's in the first row, first column. Now, if I go here, this would be in the mth row and nth column. And so here they got the row i and the column j, and obviously I'm going to have a i j. So if I want to put together a 2 by 2 matrix A, I'd have a11, a12, because I'm in the first row, and then this would be in the second row, and then this would be also in the second row, but second column. So that's how you'd represent a two by two if we called it A and all those positions. Try three by three and write that out. So this would be an example of B written out by its position. So let's get into addition. So addition just means that I add corresponding pieces. So I'm going to take matrix A, and I've given you all these matrices here, but I want to find A plus B. So here's my A plus B. I'm going to take... Like I said, corresponding pieces, so this right here, which I just wiped out and obliviated, but those two pieces are like pieces, so I'm just going to add those two together. So if I take 2 minus 1, I'm just going to get a 1. Then I'm going to go to the next pieces, 1 plus 1 would be 2, and then 0 plus 1, and so on. So we just go with that, and then the second row, we're going to get a 0, 6, and 10. I hope you can see where we get all those things. Now note that this is a 2 by 3 matrix, and this is a 2 by 3 matrix. What happens if I do ask you an example 2, what is A plus C? Well, this is a 2 by 3, and this is a 2 by 2. Well, I don't have any like pieces for this portion of my uh, A graph in C, and so I really can't add. And so the dimensions have to be the same in order to add. So we say A plus C is not possible. 2 by 3 is not the same as 2 by 2. You can't add them together. So addition, make sure that the dimensions are the same, and then you can put them together. So now example 3 says, okay, I want to find the product of B and C. So I want to multiply these two together. So first of all, we got to do dimension check. And so we start with this, and we've done this before. Uh, some of you may, may have not. But this would be a 2 by 3. And this one is a 2 by 2. And so with this, what are you going to tell me? Correct. This is not possible. Oh, that makes life easy. Okay, this is not possible. What if I said, okay, this is part A. And I say, okay, part B, find CB. Is that possible? And the answer would be yes, because I do have now a 2 by 2 multiplied by a 2 by 3. The result... These two have to match, and then they cancel off, and then we're going to be left with the dimensions 2 by 3. And there's a few different ways to do this, but you can just do it with the way they are orientated. And so I do have these going across here. So the 1 and 2 are going to be matched up over here with my negative 1 and 1. So I'm going to multiply with those respective pieces. Now note that this is row 1 of my first matrix, and this is column one of my second matrix. That's going to generate the result 1-1, one, one, position 1-1. One, one. First row and then first column together will give me the 1-1 one, one position. So in my 1-1 one, one position, I'm going to take this 1, multiply by this negative 1, and this 2, multiply by 1, and we get our result. That would be the 1-1 one, one position first row, first column. What if I wanted to get my position right here, which is the second row, second column? Well, what am I going to use? 
Well, I'm going to use my second row, second column to get that particular term. So I'm going to take this 5 and multiply it by 1. And I'm going to take this negative 1 and multiply it by 3. That would be the 2, 2 position that we do have. Notice that it's the row 2, column 2. And this is row 2, column 2. That's where we get those things from. And you can check my work there, but this is what I ended up with when I did that for each row and column. And that gave me all my positions that I needed. Now there is another way to do this too. We'll try to look at the various methods in class. All right, number four. What if we want to find a cubed and c cubed? Can we do that? So this means take a, multiply by a, and multiply by a again. Well, if we look at this, what's, what's our problem? Let's look at the dimension of this one. What is the dimension of a? Well, a is a two by three matrix. And if I take a two by three and I multiply it by another two by three, can I do this? No, we don't have a match. So this is not possible. So the dimensions don't match up. So what kind of matrix do I need in order to be able to raise it to a power? So is C cubed possible? Can we do that? Well, it's a two by two. Can we multiply a two by two by a two by two? Yeah, we're gonna get a two by two. And so yes, if we have a square matrix, raising to a power is possible. I like to put both these together and then drop the pieces down as we get them. So if I take, starting off with my one times one and then add it to two times five, that should be one plus 10, which gives me 11. And for consistency's sake, I'm gonna stay in the first column. So I'm gonna take this one and two and multiply it by, no, I did that wrong, five and negative one times my one and five respectively, and I'm going to get zero. Five minus five is zero. Once you finish the other two. And this is what I end up getting. Now let's multiply that by C again. And if I do that, I'm going to take the 11, 0, multiply it by 1 and 5, respectively. So then this becomes my C cubed. Square matrices, we can raise them to a power. I could keep on going on this if I wanted to. So you should be up to speed on number 3. So why don't you try this? Pause the video and try A minus 2B for the two given matrices. And this is what I ended up with. Double check my arithmetic, make sure I did it right. But I just shoot the two in, because it's a scalar, scalar multiple, and I shot a negative two in, I guess. And then, so then I just add the two matrices together, and I get that. Find CA. So this is back to multiplication. Try this one. It does work, because I do have C as a two by two, and then A as a two by three. So my resultant is going to be a two by three. Try it, stop this. And this is what I got. Once again, check my arithmetic. Make sure I did it right. Make sure you can do it right too. Going across and then going down with all these respectively and you can find the various spots that each one of those pieces go into. Now number five up here, we have this new notation which we have as T. That is called a transpose. So a transpose means that you're going to switch the rows with the columns, that's all it is. And with that too is that we did that in the Scooby-Doo assignment where we did transpose for the spreadsheet, if you've done that already. And so we just changed, like I said, the rows with the columns. So A, T, I'm gonna look over here at this matrix here. So the two, one, zero, instead of going across, it's gonna go down. And then the negative one, three, five, is also going to go down rather than going across. So we just transpose it as such. CT, try that. Switch this, this would be 1, 2, and then we'd have 5, negative 1. I think the square ones are more confusing because it's just more confusing. <laughs> if I have this one, it, it's a little bit easier because you do change 
going across, if so if it's longer going across, then now the transpose is going to be longer going down. Okay. Now I have this notation here, I2, so that is going to be the identity matrix. The identity matrix is a 2 by 2 in this case. If you had an I3, then you would have a 3 by 3. So 1, 1, 1, and the rest are zeros. And we continue on, do whatever identity matrix size that we do need for what we're dealing with. So now if I take A times I, oh, that's times, that's going to be my 2, 1, 0, negative 1, 3, 5, and I'm going to multiply it then by 1, 0, 0, 1. So the first thing is, is this possible? Well, if you look at this, this is 3 going across. I got 2 going down, so that's not possible. Plus, by my dimensions, that bears that out too. So then these do not match up, and so this is not possible. What would I have to multiply this one by? Well, I'd have to multiply it by a I3 to make it work. I'm not going to do that. But trust that this is the identity, and if we do multiply them together, then they should turn out to be our original that we we're multiplying by. So for this one, my dimensions do match up. This is a 2 by 2, and this is a 2 by 3. That does work, and I'm going to end up with a 2 by 3. Verify for yourself, but I can help you a little bit. 1, 0 times both of those respectively would be a 2 plus 0, just gives me my, this back. Similarly, similarly, it's just going to get us these values back. And if I do 0, 1, it's just going to be all these bottom terms that's going to get me back. So that does work. And if this one, going back to the first one, if you multiplied this by I3, then this would turn out to be the same matrix that we started off with. That's the multiplicative identity for our matrices. And now we have some theorems that we do have. Theorem 1, A, B, C, and matrices. You can do the commutative property. You can do the associative property as long as it's over addition. This is the additive identity. The zero matrix would be all zeros. So a 2 by 2 zero matrix would be that and so on. And then this one just would be a scalar. You can distribute that and so on. And then also you can do the scalars with multiplication. For theorem 2, I know I'm going through this kind of quick. Multiplication is a little bit different, though, because you can do associative. You can do the left distributive law. So if A is on the left, it must be on the left both times here. If it's on the right, it's got to be on the right both times. Remember that AB doesn't necessarily equal BA. There's rare cases that it does, but that's usually not true. And then if I'm at part D here, that's just scalars shot through. And then here's the multiplicative identity that we do have here. Here's the additive identity back here. And these are kind of fun. If I have A to the K, that just means you take matrix A and multiply it by itself many times. And it doesn't matter if you do these first and then multiply by that, or if you do these first and then multiply by that, it's all going to work out. And if A is non-zero and if X is in Rn, then A to the Kx is the result of left multiplying X by A repeatedly, K times. So you keep that in order. A to the zero should be the identity. So then that is what we end up with for A to the zero. And lastly, we have some theorems with the transpose. So the transpose of the transpose gets me back to A. And then if I do the transpose of the sum, that is the sum of the transposes. And then for any scalar, R gets mixed in there. You just throw it through. And here's the funny one, though. Notice that A and B, B, then A, they switch around. So if you want to do kind of that distributive property of the exponents on this one, the B will go first. They get reversed. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. This is all about operations of matrices, and get at it, get in there, it's going to be kind of fun. Take care.